it's uh, 16 18 p.m. we are the 24th of October and uh, I've just spent uh, my entire day uh, 11 hour as of now taking care of my singular self Luca and uh, I want to make a philosophical um, inquiry uh, about my, my day and uh, the video will last no longer than 25 minutes I have to taken uh, broadly uh, uh, I've taken broadly uh, 10 minutes to choose the structure and uh, here's what I have to say uh, let us begin with UPS the universal, the particular and the singular I try to live by envisioning that reality is a reflection of myself therefore that all the problems within reality somehow they are manifestation or, or um, reflections of my own problems I don't know how it works exactly that's one of my problems but I have said to myself I cannot solve universal problems uh, geopolitics, politics, economics, uh, tension within society if I am not even capable of solving my own singular problems that's the unity of the universal which, which is God, which is being that's the most universal category particularizes itself, limits itself in various uh, determinations of being, logic, nature, spirit, but then within uh, within spirit um, the various anthropological groups, uh, the genders, uh, the social classes, the, the, the citizenship, the countries, uh, the, the, the cultures, the religions, etc, etc, the various particularization. And then the singular are the individuals. And I've keep repeating that, I've kept repeating that they are kind of united, although distinct, uh, and I cannot solve all the problems maybe I, I can't solve all the problems but I cannot solve most of the problems if I do not solve my own problems on a singular level at least some of them so that's the reason why I have spent my entire day taking care of my singular self which means I have cleaned my room uh, yeah uh, I have cleaned my room uh, it's been now uh, two and uh, five minutes, okay. Uh, which enables me to order my immediate environment so there is clarity, um, accessibility of what I need. I, I have invested a lot of time, but now I expect a return on investment as long as I live within this environment, my apartment. It's not completely cleaned and cleared, but it's structured. Now I will I will gain a lot of time that's called investment in, in capitalist economics. I have invested uh, at least eight hours of my day in trying to order and clean my immediate environment. And now, as long as I live within this environment, I will have reward, uh, reap the, the, the reward of what I have sowed for the good, namely order. I have worked to order my immediate environment. Now things will be more accessible, more simple. Uh, I will earn time. I will know where things are. I will not waste time. That's called investment and return on investment. So that's for the uh, clean my room part. Now also, I, I, I will promote my own documents. I've made a playlist on this channel about what I call the system, which is the formal presentation of the totality of being. And I mentioned Jordan Peterson. He makes video about clean my room, how to clean your room. People can watch these videos. Uh, I will no longer watch these videos because I apply the teachings of Peterson. And now I have, I have aufgehoben uh, Peterson, namely negation while preservation. I have watched some of his videos. I have applied the teachings. I no longer need uh, I still need Peterson. <laughs> Don't worry, Mr. Peterson, I still need you. But I no longer need to watch your videos about uh, Clean My Room. I have understood. Now it's over for me. Uh, I go to uh, the next step. I, I will keep promoting you uh, for the people who need this as long as they have to, but I no longer need this teaching. Okay, four, and a, four minutes, 50. No, okay. Second part of the video. I try to let go, to improvise, to speak freely, but 
I grant myself the right to put a little bit of order in my videos because I have this order tendency to try to balance my, my in, inner chaotic aspects. So now I will speak about what I've uh, worked for about 10 minutes, namely uh, my own determinations. Here I will use Spinoza. Uh, Spinoza, to simplify, is the philosopher who says that first uh, there is only uh, one substance, uh, it is God. But he says also that to understand the world, that's not the, the, the terminology that he uses, but to understand the world through the intellect and to an, an understand oneself as being determined by the world is a, a, a way to access higher knowledge and, and joy. But in my view, it's a first moment in letting go of some aspects of negativity, namely when one understands why one is determined to act negatively the way he or she or I do or the way he or she does, it's, it can help. First, it can be a relief. It can be liberating to understand, ah, that's why I made those mistakes. That's why I suffer. That's why I made other suffer, etc. So the first moment is to understand. That requires an intellectual process. And here I will introduce a little bit of a... <laughs> Not negativity, but simply the question of race realism. Uh, race realism enables to understand how some people, not all, it's not a rigorous determinism, but people, depending on their ethnic group, they are determined partly. It's not strictly mechanistic, uh, purely uh, deterministic causality, but they are partly determined to act the way they do because of their biological determinations. That's why there are various tendencies depending on the various ethnic groups. So to understand this, by some people, it's, th it's thought to be a step towards racism. But the, the, the attempt to suppress this knowledge brings forth excesses on the other side. Many people who really become racist, I have gone through this path and I'm trying to recover. And one way of recovering is simply to, to find balance in the middle, namely to acknowledge that there are differences. And once it is accepted, uh, it's, it's clearer to understand why some people act the way they do. And then if it is understood that the way they behave is not their own free agency, but they are determined by their biology, etc., it's much easier to accept the way they are and, and to forgive if they hurt us or to, uh, to, to simply to accept the other. But then to share eventually the knowledge and, and can it be transcended? I don't know. But I know that I am determined to act like an insane leftist person, le white leftist person sometimes, and understanding this has been liberating for me. And uh, I, I still suffer from left, white, masochistic excesses, but uh, I have understood that I'm determined to act in this way. So it, it's a way for me to, to find balance. So, yeah, it can be applied universally to, to others, but in my case, it has enabled me to, to understand this. Yeah, so, okay, I've talked about uh, Spinoza uh, for eight minutes. Then. I will talk about the problems that I consciously suffer from and that I am aware of. On an empirical level, me as a singular individual in the official narrative of being a normal person, it's kind of dubious, but I suffer from the absence of a biological father, which has led me to be unbalanced because I have never had a masculine figure uh, either a, a biological father or uh, who has raised me as, as, as a child, as, as a teenager. So I have lacked the, the, the masculine archetype, the father figure who, who, who puts order and, 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 and encourages the, the strength of character, the will, the, who, who sets limits, who, who is authoritarian, not authoritarian, but who brings authority order. It can be authoritarian. I know that I suffer from this. And it has played a role in my psychological development because I have unconsciously sought a father figure that I have found in various radical role models because they have that was an attempt for me to find the balance that I lacked. I have always mostly blamed my own failures on the absence of a biological father uh, because uh, I, I blame always the, the, my own failures on, on, on my own lack of strength and lack of character and I associate this with the absence of the father archetype. So I've understood that this is the reason, I mean, there are other reasons, but this is one of the reasons why I, I can be angry. I have been angry against socialism, the welfare state, 
uh, materialism in the ordinary sense. This is one of the reasons, there are others, and sometimes against women, uh, because I associate these economic ideologies or, or the, the, the gender, women in the sense of, of uh, psychology and also um, objective or guys, namely their social role, with a, a lack of, 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 of autonomy, strength, character, etc. So I've had the tendency to go in the opposite pole, the opposite uh, direction, namely libertarianism uh, against socialism, the welfare state, uh, Marxism, and also idealism and, and, and spirituality, which I think is good, but maybe with excesses sometimes, and, and, and a focus on masculinity, because I have not been balanced, and this is my singular story, but UPS, it can be particularized to most Western people, because there is connection with Peterson, because the problem of the West is the, the, the lack of a strong father figure, because the last time that a Westerner, that's not the proper determinacy, but a European, an anthropological European, had authority and embodied the masculine principle. Well, he was Austrian, and uh, <clears throat> yeah, he brought uh, trouble. I've understood this many years ago, but I keep uh, forgetting or falling back. But when I'm in clear-minded mood, I understand, <clears throat> and this is why I've been attracted, like I said, to ma masculinity. I suffer from a sense of lacking masculinity. I am attracted by libertarianism because it's the most masculine political ideology uh, in the modern context without the excesses of German nationalism, one might say. Uh, I, that's also why I'm attracted by German rigor and systematicity. This explains why I've, I've had and still have an obsession with order, rigor, systematicity, that which I associate with Germany metaphysically. Uh, yeah. And I still do have this, but then there's the excesses and there's the good aspect. I mean, order really is good, but an excess of what I call fanaticism, uh, rationalistic, uh, totalitarian, systematic fanaticism can be excessive. I try to find a proper balance. This explains why I grant myself the right to order this video slightly with, uh, I will put uh, the, the formal structure. I stopped to do this. Now I grant myself the right to put a little bit of order because I took care of my singular self the entire day, and I don't really care. What I care about, of course, is uh, <laughs> German metaphysics, but they are partly connected. And then also that's why I'm so attracted by American women. I can't help but, but uh, fall in love with American women because, not all of them, but because they are strong, independent, and uh, they are beautiful. <laughs> not all of them, but... Uh, <laughs> Yeah, this explains my attraction uh, and my, my love, I can say. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, okay. It's been 13.07 minutes. Uh, also, I have accused, and I still am, I suffer from accusing, and I, not that I suffer, that I am guilty of accusing others of being incompetent. Uh, mostly uh, socialist, uh, bureaucratic, etc. But. I have been and I still am incompetent in many topics. This is part of my psyche and this explains what I say on a, on a universal level but also my, my, my individual behavior because I accuse others of being incompetent uh, but I myself am incompetent. So my, my, my role as long as I can act is to try to become competent in what I do and this explains all what I've said about competence or lack of competence and my psychology, my masochistic tendencies because um, when I accuse others of, of failing in what they do, or when I judge them negatively, uh, um, I, 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 either I, I receive negativity uh, in, 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 uh, come back at me, and then I feel guilty, and I feel the need to punish myself, and... Um, I, I suffer from masochism. I will not develop much longer, but I understand kind of why. And that's why also, that's why I kind of enjoy suffering, partly suffering. I enjoy this because it toughens me up. It strengthens me. And uh, that's why I, I kind of enjoy uh, sometimes. That's why I'm masochistic, partly. And uh, 
I would say I, I should stop being masochistic, but in a way I enjoy it. But sometimes really I don't uh, because it really brings a lot of suffering. But I understand that I suffer from masochism because I, I, I enjoy, I, I would rather suffer than, than cause suffering to others. So I, I kind of, yeah, it, I, it's, I will not develop much, but I, I kind of understand. Yeah. Which is connected to the question of uh, mental health. Uh, I know that I suffer from psychological, psychoanalytical and psychiatric issues. I am aware of this. That's the first step. That's the Spinozian moment to understand. And then that's the first moment. Then one has to cure. It's very difficult. But uh, I made a video on one of my other channels about mental health. I will put the link. Uh, Lady Gaga talks about this mental health. I will put the link. Uh, and... Uh, yeah, also, I watch one way of curing my, my own problem is to watch my own videos. That's part of my ethical standards. I, I, I cannot expect and I do not expect to others to do what I myself do not do. So uh, I, I don't expect others to watch my video as long as I do not watch my own videos, which I have started doing over the past few days. And now I took uh, time uh, when I uh, clean my room or when I uh, uh, cook or when I uh, clean or when I do the, 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 the businesses, which is necessary to to take care of my immediate environment, I listen to my own videos uh, and I find wisdom sometimes and inspiration and, and yeah, in my in my own videos. So I grant myself the right to do this. And uh, so yeah, this video about, I understand why I partly suffer from mental health problem. And uh, there is maybe no cure, but to understand is part of a, yeah. Also, precisely about judging others. I've understood what people call karma, uh, or uh, yeah, it's actually action reaction. Uh, in in religious language, you reap what you sow, etc., etc. Of course, there's a, the, the temptation to say, "Oh, I will sow uh, positive vibes, uh, so I will get back positivity." I'm a little bit cynical about this, but my my motto is, "I share light, so that I might receive light back." eventually and I've understood that if I share too much light at the same time it is blinding so I share seeds of light it's partly scheming but it's partly being honest uh, yeah so about judging I understand that people do not like to be judged negatively because they feel hurt uh, in their being no one likes to be judged except uh, sometimes it can be really positive to receive negative judgments from from people that one values and I have taken strength and and, 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 um, and and character from being judged negatively by people that I have a, a high opinion of because it I, 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 I accept that okay you are being honest it hurts me and depending that's part of judgment sometimes it takes many months many years uh, to to accept negative judgments that I have received and that one has received to understand okay this person, judged me negatively but actually he or she might have been right and only now i understand but the more i i, be, I am being nudged, judged negatively the more it kind of strengthens me and it can strengthen my resentment that's negative or my, my 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 gratefulness for being judged negatively because i acknowledge that the other is is lucid and correct correct and i say okay uh, you are negative against me but this this helps me become better and i i accept your judgment it kind of hurts me but I accept and now I will improve. That's my motto when it's not too painful uh, morally. I, I use this to strengthen myself. And uh, I understand that people do not like to be judged, but I, I will list, I have listed uh, things that I have achieved as an empirical individual. And I, I suffer from a serious lack of loss or, or absence of, of sense of self-worth on an empirical level. And as long as I can act, I will try to improve myself. And uh, these are the things that I have done. I do not expect others to do so, but I, I have to, I am at war with myself. I, I, either I struggle or I'm at war or I, it, I'm in conflict with myself and uh, I hurt myself, but also I have to learn to, to make peace sometimes and, and to love aspects of myself, which is part of the struggle. I have to accept some of the aspects of myself. And here are things that I have done for many weeks that I still will do as long as I have to or I can or whatever. But 
uh, I have done this and, and now I feel confident, not in judging others, but I am at peace with myself, namely, I have cleaned my room and I will still do because it's intelligent, it's, it's, a, it's an investment, it's rewarding, it's common sense, it's a good thing to do. So I have cleaned my room. I have listed partly all of my possession, not all of them, but most of them, all my books uh, and what I own so that I have a clear understanding of what I possess materially so I can, um, I'm aware of my, of my environment and, and what I need to buy or not buy, what I can get rid of or not, etc. So it's just, uh, yeah. I am getting rid, I have get gotten rid of and still do of useless objects. I am simplifying my material life every day. I get rid of useless objects. I simplify, that's minimalism. Uh, I have partly promoted minimalism and uh, that's, I draw inspiration. Now I've become a minimalist and I get rid of useless things every day. Uh, I buy groceries every day, but in exchange, I give food stamps to people who might need it because I have an excess of money that I don't need. So. I buy groceries for myself, I give food stamps, not money, to others uh, who need it or not. I renounce comfort willingly. Uh, I really, I, I, I renounce comfort, it makes, it's, it's part of the strengthening of the will to endure more difficult physical conditions of existence, but it's also a way to, to, uh, to spare uh, money and, and to, 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 to limit the, the consumption of energy, and it's just my, my decision, I limit comfort. Uh, I buy local products, organic products, and I try to turn my resentment into bitterness. Uh, resentment is one's own weakness projected onto others. Bitterness is to make peace with one's own suffering, in a way, so that it doesn't hurt the other. I try to be bitter, uh, and not resentful. It's very difficult, of course, but I try to work on this. Uh, about the educational system. I have a problem with the educational system. What do I do to solve the problem? I produce my own content. Uh, I made videos about logic, about the system, and uh, I recommend uh, educational channels in, in the videos about the system, what I call the, the make the educational great, the education system great again. I promote channels which promote knowledge. So that's my way of solving the problems of the educational system. Against the welfare state, I promote minimalism. I have no income. Uh, I leave off my own money, which I have earned through public money due to a self caused accident, and I give back the money by uh, giving food stamps or uh, I use the money to, um, uh, to simplify uh, my, my material life, etc., to promote knowledge, etc., etc. Or, yeah, or I pay back in donations and, and the rest is, um, I paid not by work, but by hurting myself. Uh, and I receive money for my accident, but that's my own suffering transformed into money. So I, I grant myself the right to use it uh, as I see uh, fit. But as long as I do not need money, and maybe I will not, not, not need money, I just share my excesses of money and I, uh, I do not um, uh, contribute because I have no income. I limit my consumption and uh, I give back what the state has given me in the form of donation, food stamps, etc. etc. Uh, also a song by Taylor, which has used me, uh, you see, has helped me, uh, anti-hero. Uh, Taylor is a great source of inspiration. And I have one minute and 20 seconds to talk about my vices. I have given up over the years of drinking alcohol. I no longer drink alcohol. I no longer take cigarettes. Uh, fat and sugar no longer or very limited. Uh, I no longer watch porn. I, I do not show off with clothes. I've gotten rid of my nice clothes, uh, which were kind of uh, immature stupidity, but that's part of my development. I no longer buy uh, nice clothes or etc. And I have given up on my pathetic attempts to imitate some of my heroes. I no longer uh, sing uh, in my in my. I did this a few times, maybe uh, to try to imitate to imitate Eminem. Uh, the the T-shirt uh, can't uh, Nietzsche Hegel. I no longer do this. That's kind of embarrassing, but that's part of my process. But I no longer about my vice. I no longer buy books on Amazon. Buying books is part of my addiction, and reading books is part of my addiction. And I, 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 I there was a moment where I say I will no longer read any books. Now I grant myself the right to read one hour, one hour or two to read some of the books that I have bought. 
but uh, yeah this is part of getting rid of my vices and uh, yeah i will end the video 25 minutes uh, i will put the structure and uh, yeah